Welcome to Money Congos, where we discuss personal finance and investment tips. We are committed to helping people create wealth and achieve financial freedom. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast. Alright then, let's head into today's conversation. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great, yourself. I'm okay, I'm all right. You know, lately, you've been getting some big, big projects. I did build them more cathedrals. <laughs> hey, this matter you go carry it out. Say, shots fired. <laughs> shots fired, bro. Zero shots fired. Hmm. It is well. <laughs> Uh, interesting stuff we have going on what yeah. are you doing? oh been good been good it's just i think the past few weeks have been a bit busy that's how come uh, my involvement was not very uh this thing but i i, mm. I think i've figured myself around this project so i'm fine <laughs> oh fine 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 fine, fine. Yeah. more cathedrals are going so. even, even. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it was it david or solomon who wanted to build a temple for the lord <laughs> oh, it, it was, was David and then God said to me too much blood on his hands so his son Solomon would do it uh, he, 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 he. Uh, I, thought in the, I thought in the Bible maybe they had said Nanado but okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, Charlie let, 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 let me be minding my own business and keep it moving Charlie you <laughs> Anyway, so today, Charlie, we have a, this this interesting conversation about um, how to get rich. I'm sure people would be thinking, oh, these people have been watching this Netflix series for how many years now? They've not finished. <laughs> and, but you know, for real though, it takes me forever to watch movies and series. Like a yeah. normal standard movie of two hours, it would take me like four or five tries because the easiest way to make me fall asleep is to put it's me in front of the TV. Movie. Yeah, Charlie, if you want to put me to bed real quick, just put on a movie or a series, I'm gone. No time. Even in the cinema. Wow. Well, recently, I saw I saw Bad Boys, and I didn't fall asleep. Surprisingly, so wow, you know, yeah. yeah. In the cinema, they have to sleep small, and then maybe some five minutes every now and then, at least twice. You understand? <laughs> this 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 movie. Did you have you seen? The Avatar, the more recent Avatar. No, I haven't yet. That movie went for oh, it's it's a, it's a well, I've seen recent, but I'm sure it came out like two, three, or four years ago. And it's no, I don't. Someone was I like, yeah. yeah, someone was like, see, the movie was so long, he had to take a nap, and he even got tired of taking the nap in the movie. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's that bad. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, well, but you of you watch series on your own time, series, movies, and those kind of things. Yeah, I do. I do watch some series. Um, mm. It's just movies nowadays that I don't seem to be able to find. But interestingly, I I can watch series uh-huh. when I am free. Uh-huh. I I'll just put in a, a number of episodes and then watch. Uh-huh. Okay. Then later, on, and then but the, the, it's like I I have my seasons when I'm in the mood for it. I could uh-huh. watch it, maybe. And then after some time, I could go months and months without watching any series or movie or anything. Mm. Then, then I get into a, that season again when I I feel like hey, I need to catch up on something. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah, uh, I feel you. I feel you. Interesting. So, well, this one we've still not run out of the season yet. We are still in the mood for this one. So, we're gonna take yeah. the next couple of weeks. Every other week, we'll bring an episode till we finish it. It's eight episodes. We're going to talk about episode six this week. In two weeks, we talk about another, um, that will be episode seven. And then in four weeks, we will talk about episode eight and finish it off before we move so that we can move to another movie or series yeah. about money. And maybe yeah. the other ones, we'll try to make it move faster. You know, exactly. we'll buy a couple of episodes, just take the highlights. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I like I like when we do these conversations. We can drill down into some detail, but trying to put everything multiple episodes into one. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So 
Today's episode, is there uh, episode six? Is there any particular part of it that struck you? Um, yeah, I think um, this um, couple that are yet to, I think that are planning for their marriage. Uh, and uh, like we've seen the theme in most of the, the couples that have been uh, featured, you see a stark difference between the, I mean, the husband and the wife, or I mean, I think there was a gay couple in there too. So, <laughs> I mean, between the parties, it just shows the the kind of stark differences that shows up sometimes between um, couples. How one person can be a, a free-spirited spender and another person may be more analytical and more detail-oriented and all of that. So, I mean, it was interesting to see that play out again in another uh, uh, um, couple and how they were trying to surmount their issues and then plan towards their marriage as they went forward. Yeah. True, true. And it's, it's I like that. There have been, a couple, like you mentioned, there have been a couple of different couples in there. Mm-hmm. So we get to look at all these views. The newer couple that you're you referencing, the one about to get married, actually the, the, two, the gay couple is also trying to, also up uh, get married soon but then the, mm-hmm. um, I think this was Reggie and yes. Reggie and yeah Reggie is the Filipino and Sarah. I'm talking about Reggie and Sarah great today yeah. I got the names right <laughs> okay <laughs> so with them one thing one one thing that came in this time let me let me come after Ramit again it's been a minute since I came after Ramit but <laughs> did I got a sense the the Reggie who is more detailed about money, be a saver, cut costs, blah blah blah, all that stuff, right? I got a sense that he was being made to look bad. That you yeah. know because it was more about agreeing with what the woman says, okay, don't be so buttoned up, don't be so this, don't be so that. But meanwhile, you've gone through the woman's finances, barely has any savings compared to the guy who has a lot of savings. Exactly. And and if you pick up from the early right from when they, they were brought in she was his boss and he uh, said still is I think she yeah. she mentioned freelance later so she may have swift job so it's, it's possible that she's been, she earns more than him he exactly. has more to show for it like yeah. can we not address that you know uh-huh. maybe address it nicely but then it's like it's coming off as okay he's having to apologize for being so on top of the money. Yeah, there are certain things that, fine, it would not be nice if you are being too anal about, like, why is the, why is the coffee machine on? Machine those kind on, of things. yeah. Fine, but like, <laughs> you're not pay, you're barely paying down your credit card debt. You want to spend, spend, spend. Like, she says, she makes a comment like, when she brings him an idea, rather than him cut it down, and he, yeah, she wants him to say, okay, let's do this and, so she wants him to say, let's do all the things that she's suggesting and even more. But meanwhile, he's like, okay, listen, it's not that I don't want us to do this, but how can we do it well? And so that, that whole conversation was going like, let's go with the one who is, ironically, not being financially responsible. I found mm-hmm. that quite off. And um, bro, <laughs> this one is roadside, but, <laughs> but I'm still say it because I'm sure, see, so what we, we talk about compatibility in relationships, you know, we talk about compatibility and I had a, a recent experience and it's when you see red flags, Charlie, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> when did they wave their flags at you? <laughs> you just surrender and walk away. Because sometimes <laughs> some of these things, I'm telling you, some of these things, it doesn't end at just money. It's the mindset yeah. around it will be applied to other things. Yeah. Right. Where I was in a situation where I'm like, oh yeah, like I follow a budget, like I don't have anything like lose cash. And then the other person was like, yeah, nah, the way I'm a big spender, the way I do this, the way now nah, we won't work out. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm trying to be compromising. I was like, no, oh, you know, as long as, you know, we have a plan and we, we all contribute towards the plan, you can spend the rest of the money however you want it. The person's like, nah, nah, nah. Bro, I stopped listening to that, nah. Ended up being quite, um, quite an experience, let me say. You know, so um, we talk about compatibility. It's, it's it's a tough thing to juggle in the sense that, yes, the episode uh, was said that a lot of couples are opposite, but how much opposite is too opposite? Too opposite, yeah. You understand? How much <coughs> should you be willing to compromise? You get mm-hmm. me? Because I didn't hear the lady trying to say anything about being, about changing her behavior or changing her spending habits. Or did, did am I getting it wrong in there? 
Do you pick up no. on anything where she said she would adjust her spending habits? I don't quite remember that. And I also thought that right from the start when Ramit was reviewing his spreadsheets and, um, you know, he did some kind of a presentation about, I think, the current state, the future, mm-hmm. the hand, those type of things. One of the comments where he was like, it's as though he set out to find a fault that this level of detailedness was maybe uh, indicative of something that would be amiss. I don't know if mm-hmm. you realize that Ramit normally does that when he mm-hmm. looks at people's um, finances. You know, obviously, when you read, when you look at people's finances, it gives you an insight into the, the kind of people that they are because obviously where your treasure is that's where your heart will be also so uh, definitely if you want to know much about somebody you just look at how they spend and you can equally just kind of summarize their character and their their, their personality and what have you so right from there i noticed ramit sort of um started when he said, oh, okay no then this is indicative of something deeper and everything and then it was more like, no, maybe he was just being picked on him. But I felt maybe, maybe he gave the woman too much grace. I don't know. Maybe he should have also given her a bit of uh, some some tight, uh, sharp words, like he does with a lot of people anyway. Mm-hmm. It's not He's not someone who is afraid to tell people. But I like the fact that even when he has to have difficult conversations, he knows they are going to be difficult conversations. And he has a very nice way of starting off those difficult conversations. Like, for example, the woman who was doing the MLM, you mm-hmm. know, how, you know, there was a, she was all in this cloud nine and he just wanted to burst her bubble, but he found a nice way of saying it. So the same way this woman too, who had problems with her spending, yes, it's true that uh, you want people to not just, eat. the last point he said before going to meet them, when he said that, oh, you need to live life also outside of the spreadsheet. That's where I, I felt he already started up with a certain mindset. And what you were, what you picked, what, you are not wrong in actual fact. I also saw the same thing. But uh, the fact that you also mentioned it just may, may, means that the two of us picked that glaring uh, uh, thing out because it seemed like it was he was out there to get him because he seemed to suggest that maybe he was just too glued into the spreadsheets and the the details and the documentation but was not living life outside of that but i don't think that was the case it's maybe his partner because of the nature of his uh, his wife to be probably he needed to be extra analytical and detailed because the woman he is with is a bit uh, doesn't have a spending under control yeah that's true and and if you are dealing with someone who gives no rope, and it becomes a point of okay, like it's 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 a give and take, right? If you're always giving, 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 and the other person is not, like two two people are neither is willing to give anything, then it becomes tell you what's going on here, right? I get that, like from the top, like looking at how detail oriented this person is, there's a risk that this person may come off as condescending when they are talking about the finances. Or even when you, you know, we, we add these things to like the Ramsey show, the, when couples come, it's like, you're always telling the person about the, the numbers, the numbers, and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that, right? And we've learned from there, it should be about the shared vision, right? So it's, uh, it, it's it can be a concern if somebody is so detail-oriented. However, just because someone is detail-oriented doesn't mean that they can't have a reasonable conversation. I've had some experiences <laughs> that have made me realize that Charlie <laughs> some people do not like to deal with people who are detail oriented and they would gaslight the heck out of you for it as if there's something wrong with being like that but you know some of these things last 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 20 years to come if, if you continue on that path and you don't have a retirement you know listen to the Dave Ramsey show people call in 50 I don't have much left. I have just 10 years, 15 years more of working. What can I do? Somebody calls at 60. I ain't got nothing. What should I do? Like, these things happen. People look like they are living okay. They are living all right. Like, just yesterday, I called Jennifer because I had seen something on a WhatsApp group. 30 year olds dying of natural causes. At that point, I'm like, nah, investments, no. 
Maybe we should stop the all this investment, investment thing, right? But then it's a risk. You don't know. Yes, we're not saying live like a pauper, but live within your means. Enjoy life what you can. There was a time when I was in college and what I could do to enjoy is buy Fanta. Buy Fanta and some bread and egg. That was my jam. But now, by the grace of God, I can buy cheesecake on a whim. <laughs> you understand? I can buy other things on a whim. I can go to a store and say, well, what kind of chocolate do you want? And hey, you see... And then God willing to, in a few more years, it will be even better things to buy on a whim. But then it's all about the level you are at. You know, if if you have a good enough nest egg, if you have things going on well for you, you can afford to put these things on this. You can afford these extra luxuries. That's great. But if 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 someone's perspective in having a conversation is they want to YOLO, they want to live in the moment, usually when you hear those kind of things, it's followed by a lack of discipline, and um, what's it called? Um, a lack of discipline and short-term thinking and uh, impulsiveness. That's the word I was looking for, impulsiveness. And that's, especially if you're trying to be with someone in a family, you're trying to be with someone in a family, and because there will be bills to be paid. And when you're living on your own and it's all about you, you, you find there's some risk. But when it now becomes two people, it's like someone will feel like they have to pick up the slack. Someone will feel like, you know what? I have to make, I have to work harder than I normally would to fill a gap that this other person is going to leave. And sometimes if you're going to be with someone, you go like, okay, fine. I can be handling things on my own. But what if something happens? Do I feel like I can, I, I can fall back on this person to say, you know what? I'm tight right now, but can we fall on you? But if the person has been yellowing with their life, you have nothing else that you can also fall back on the way you've been handling everything. You get me? So it's, it's some type of way, man. It's some type of way. Adam, how about the way they talk about the, the wedding? It's same <laughs> wedding, wedding cost of wedding can bring trouble. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you know and the I've funny seen, thing. I was, just, mm-hmm. I was just scrolling on the timeline as you were also ranting just now, and then I just saw the Ramsey's post where our wedding getting too expensive just at the same time you asked the question. Bro. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, for context, right? And I put this on a group. I don't know if anyone responded. Let's see. Um, I don't yeah, think um, so. yeah. yeah. Is this uh, how how much? If I, you are in church, so you church there, wedding <laughs> central. How much are weddings costing these days? And I'm sure there will be different levels. Like there's the there's the luxurious wedding. There's the normal abrabuashasi wedding. There's the low budget <laughs> wedding. Like, can you give me some perspective? Hmm. It's been a well, I, I, honestly speaking, the ranges are so wide mm-hmm. because, it, it, like you were saying, there are people who do budget friendly all the way to, um, how do they call it, uh, the very luxurious ones. But honestly speaking, I really don't, I, the figures I have have been have from some time back, but I think even a budget, what we might even, what sometimes we might even call a budget, it's quite expensive even now in our context, especially in Ghana. Because if I look at a place, like even if you look at, let's say, things like refreshments, or um, for those who not even do it in a chapel venue, or even you can have, you can have it at the church, and then uh, maybe a reception at a, at a at an event center. The event center prices range from anything starting from five thousand cities to ten thousand to fifteen to what? I mean, it's it's so wide. Like it's so difficult to even say. Okay, okay. if you maybe if you have fifty k, you can okay. do. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'll put it in context for you. Let's let's keep it simple. Yeah. Where's Prince when you need Prince? Eh? This oh, is it's where. True. See, let me ask you this question right now you had somebody and you were ready to marry how much would you be comfortable living uh, spending on the whole cost of the wedding let's include honeymoon dresses everything all right and to give you context i think we we can classify you as middle income in ghana We, when we, maybe, when we put you when we go to the upper middle income we put you in the higher upper middle income or where do we put you Oh no, I think I think yes, of course you can put it. I think I don't I don't think that I am down there as because obviously when I compare, I know that I am privileged compared to a lot of other people. But I'm also mm-hmm. not up up there. So <laughs> So that's safe to yeah, say no. middle income person. Yes, uh, yes, yes, just a regular middle income uh, hustling hustling on the on the on the on the job. 
then. So how, how, but how honestly, much would you be comfortable spending comfortable. on your wife's dream special day? <laughs> Hey, I'm by asking the question. <laughs> well, for me, okay, I don't know. CK seems to be like what I feel realistic. Ghana CDs. Uh, hey, I don't know. Well, it's too small, eh? <laughs> no, because see, let me give you context. I got married I in 20... When I, when I was married, my, my first... <laughs> that one was 2018. And we kept yeah. it reception, just um, event center uh, somewhere at Chadu. Um, mm-hmm. cocktails, simple things. Yeah, Sim- look, yeah, my friend work on the, the hotel she was staying at. So my friend, I was with my friend, and I was like, I drop me off at the wedding and go pick it up. Came, yeah, when we were done, I drove my car, everybody left. Like, I didn't even wait for people yeah. to finish it himself. I'm out, exactly. got the rest of my life to live, right? So, kept it very yeah, simple. Exactly. That one said, so We spent around 40,000 CDs in 2018. Ah, Original you. budget was 25. In all fairness, uh-huh. I got a lot of help from my mother to, uh, yeah. to for it to get up to the forty, yeah. the for around yeah. forty. All right, but I was we yeah. we were willing to spend twenty five k on on it, yeah. and we had that. The rest, yeah. if you if if somebody wants something, well, fund it. If you want it, fund it. That kind of yeah. was brought it up to the forty k, right? And that's yeah. a very simple thing. So twenty eighteen, you know, let's double that like twice. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because you know inflation. So that will bring Oh you yeah. To no, honestly it, speaking, mm-hmm. I know that realistically if I like something like what you are talking about will be not nothing less than let's say seventy to eighty. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean what? that's that you know what, what I was saying? That was saying that realistically speaking. Yeah, that's what I was saying that realistically speaking. But that's why when I look at context in terms of how hard it is to earn money now and all of those things, that's why I am looking at um the first figure that comes to my mind, I'm saying 50. Knowing very well that like Ramit said, whatever you intend to spend times two. Do you get me? <laughs> so my starting figure, I'm looking at that. But I know that by the time you finish dealing with this extra, your mom has brought these extra people, your 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 church, this, your dad, this, your dad, this, and you turn all around, you are looking at. But if you, I start out at 100, and I know I'm doing 200. <laughs> hey, so that's why you're managing expectations. I feel you. 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 So, so that, realistically speaking, you are looking, yeah, if you are looking for, all the things that we normally I'm not even talking about the, t- the typical IG stuff like the IG weddings where we mm. see all those oh, uh, all those things that people no, that one, those do IG weddings I'm sure they get into 600, 700,000 exactly Cause if, yeah. because those people will be talking in dollars if you are spending yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. if you are spending what $10,000 would be let's say 150 that one day, so let's say thirty thousand. You're looking at four fifty. I'm sure people are spending close really? to fifty thousand dollars on those kind of weddings. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. But uh, anyway, back to so so a normal normal descends. Your family is at least your family is not embarrassed. Kind of wedding. Yeah. That one you're looking at like hundred k. Yeah, that's it. so. I'm, so anything from Chazi. eighty to hundred, and those are yeah. like quite simple stuff. For. Okay, so now. Yeah. So now, no, this is why I want us to steer this conversation. Italy, at this point, PTSD is hitting me. Having certain conversations with some people about wedding cost. When somebody says, oh, they don't care about the budget. But let's, let's put this in context. People in Ghana yeah. these days, tell it, how many people are making more than 10,000 cities a month? These exactly. Days? So if the wedding is going to cost, um, let's say, 100 very few people, you know, when the Smith reports came and we did that say that survey, well, we didn't do it. So that survey that came out some yeah, time back. Uh, Jerome, Jerome did this. Jerome, I think, right. This year Ron they've launched it, another one again, and hopefully mm-hmm. the results will come out and we'll see the updated version now. Great. Granted, yeah. it's not representative of the whole nation. It's representative of the people who be on social media on Twitter. Exactly. Right. So uh, if that's even if they will even be representative of that. But I think we were looking at L, like even I mean, you com- combine them with SNIT data, a lot yeah. of people earn way less than five thousand CDs a month. Oh yeah, that's true. Then, so now let's that's take that five thousand CDs a month. 
then you remove yeah. your uh, you move your rent, you remove all those expenses. Now yeah. let's just say there are two people, and let's assume the man and the woman will contribute equally. Let's make that very rough, rough, rough. embarrassing yeah. assumption. Rough. <laughs> very rough assumption just to give this thing a chance so you yeah. take all your bills out and all those things how much is your disposable income going to be Bro, exactly. I think people earning 5,000 can afford have, have disposable income of even 2,000 yeah. cities bro don't yeah. think so no, they can't so especially in those cost of living crisis now bro so mm. you let's say the two of you are able to cobble together 4,000 cities a month to save mm. towards a wedding of 100,000 where is Dennis when you need math? Let, let me, 100 divided by 4. That would be 20 25. months. So, 20 months. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, 25. Yeah. 25 months. 25 months of your yeah. dis- disposable income of 25 months. Exactly. That's two years of two savings. Years. Mm. That means, and that's probably, that means you're not saving towards anything else. Any you're not saving towards again. your rent advance that when you live together. Yeah. You're not saving yeah. towards this. You're not, you're not saving towards yeah. anything else. Oh dear yeah. God! All right, yeah. guys, I think at this point, at this point, it's true we have we have certain desires, but there's a there, we need to put the money. Let's let's put a number there first, right? And then let's 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 see if we can work towards it. But I had an idea, I, I had an idea um, that came up recently uh, on social media. So I was talking to somebody and it came up. Okay. Let us start like when you do a wedding and you celebrate. Apart from the fact that a lot of the costs in the wedding are really frivolous things like feeding people, right? Mm-hmm. What are you celebrating? You've not done mm. anything yet. You see, <laughs> considering divorce rates, and I'm saying this as somebody who's mm. been divorcing before, right? I, like a five year mark would be something even worth celebrating at. You know what? Yeah. We hang in here for five months, five years. Uh, let's let's renew our vows. And at that point, you can have an even bigger party because guess what? You actually have stuff to celebrate. You have kids to celebrate it with. You have <laughs> possibly even more income than where you started from. Exactly. You get me? Charlie, what exactly. do you think of this radical idea? No, honestly speaking, I think um, that theme uh, ran through a number of times when I was listening to um, uh, uh, Dave, Dave Ramsey. Uh, a number, I think some people for ND called, they said, oh yes, they, they like the idea that." Weddings are nice events. They are celebrations that like is worth doing. But you know, you don't have to break the bank in order to do that because it sets up the marriage for for failure. And I saw this matter also. Ramit kind of mentioning these issues that uh, that even though that was related to the people, um, the gay couple, that one person was um, was hiding information from the other. It still stems from the same issue that you know these financial issues cause seed or they sow they sow seeds into the marriage before the marriage starts, especially if um, things go south. You know, you you end up stretching yourself. Look at the critical example we have just looked at. That even for the average person who is earning, and you see, for people who are earning about five thousand cities, for a lot of them, even from that survey, when we look at it. They are amongst, like, Charlie, the people that we will say they are, I mean, they are not the lowest of the low, you see. They are actually sort of like, maybe lower of the middle income sort of yeah. people, you see. And yeah. these are people who have to cough up two years of their savings, okay, from the simple calculations with the two years, two straight years, just to do a 100,000 CD wedding, you know. And that is no joke saving two years consistently and meaning that nothing else is happening you know the, apart from just um your normal regular you are not saving for anything not saving for retirement not saving for maybe starting your family and all of that so how many people can even bear this kind of burden you know it's it's it, it just sets people up and if you are not careful resentment will even start because you start off with a lot of pressure and resentment to set in and if you are not careful the marriage itself will fail as a result of these things. So I think what you're saying is a very good thing. Very cut it down to the lowest possible and then at a, an anniversary f- five years, ten years down the line I think those are some of the experiences we need to invest in so that 
as people, we celebrate these things. You, you can actually have five years preparing for maybe a trip as a, a as as a family to go and celebrate your anniversary or something, you know, something like that. We can we should I think we should start to rethink some of the things we do. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. We need to re- we need to rethink these things. It's life has gotten too expensive for us to be holding on to certain traditions. Let's enjoy, but let's enjoy responsibly. <laughs> Being married is good. Having a family is good. But then does that mean because you can't afford a great, the very, like a very big wedding, you won't get married? Maybe being married will even help you in your career, bring you all that focus and all that. But you'll be losing out on some of those blessings just because the the, the entry fee is so expensive. I tell you. Anyway, anyway, wow, we spent a lot of time talking about this part. Um, I want us to talk about this multi-level marketing thing. Is it still a thing in Ghana? Um, yeah, is it still a thing in Ghana? Network marketing, um, multi-level marketing. It's been a while since somebody threw one of these in front of my face anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but the last one I really remember that was very aggressively fought was, uh, is it Max International or something? Yep. Uh, that's, the, that's the one I remember the last one that was aggressively marketed in front of me, like a number of people who felt I was losing out, I was missing out, I was not, uh, those sort of things. I think that's the last one I remember. But I think there was another one they said, I think it's still on, people say long reach products or something. I don't know, something like that. One or two people have mentioned it, but it's not been so popular like the Max International that was uh, some years ago, yeah. Okay, okay. I think, yeah, I, I, I see I see the sentiments you're talking about. Like, I actually see it that it's not so big a deal. When we were back in college, yeah, we were doing some of those things. Mm. Uh, but now people have become wiser to it. It's, I guess we could we could focus our lesson, uh, the discussion about it. It's not exactly on the technicality of MLM, but more about the same, the themes and how they run through other things. For example, uh, we talk about how MLM is good. It's a good sales strategy for the company. It gets more people coming. It puts in certain commitments. Well, if you can do this, if you can do that, we'll give you certain rewards. Gets people to be entrepreneurial. That's great. You get to sell. The company gets to sell to more people because you are doing word of mouth. Word of mouth spreads. is, is more effective than uh, adverts and those other things, right? So great. But then eventually you run out of the people. But most importantly, as somebody getting into any kind of business, you really have to assess your feasibility. Like, they, some of these business ideas, people fixate on the one person who did very well. It could be real estate. It could be MLM. It could be anything, right? But they'll say, oh yeah, if you get to level seven, if you get to this level, they'll give you a car. They'll do this. Okay. How many people? And when, when I was thinking about the kind of career I wanted to get into when I was in um, university, I realized that uh, a lot of people who are in investment banking, gr- granted, I was thinking outside of Ghana. I was thinking on uh, the, the companies in London which were recruiting Goldman Sachs, Bank of America. But like all these people are doing very well. Medicine in Ghana, it will be hard for you to do medicine and be broke. Maybe it's from your spending habits, right? But if you do medicine and you specialize in a good area, especially surgery, one, even as a general, medicine in general, you will have a flaw under you because you always have a job. The government will always keep you. Two, you get extra money by doing locum. Like those, you'd go and freelance around. You know, those kind of things, or even pharmacy. I had these people who go and put their license on a pharmacy. They will visit there every now and then. You know, like these are things that, these are businesses that on the average, generally speaking, everybody who gets in there does well. Some will do better than others, but there's a certain flaw. Okay, the average is pretty high. But then there are other business ideas that only a few people do well. And the way they do well is so big that it looks glamorous. Like day trade, cryptocurrency. We don't hear, but like it's, it could be a one out of 10 or a one out of 100 chance, right? So when we are assessing business ideas or investments or even potential careers, ask like, what is the average person making in this? What's the likelihood that I'll be, that I'll, I'll be making the exceptional if the average is so low? You get me. So, if you actually look at it that way, it work out. You 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 can do your your checks better. And when it has to do with things that have to that about money, money is very objective. Money is 
numbers. You can actually write these things down. Even if you are looking at a, a job offer and there, there, are, there are medical allowances, all the allowances, you can actually quantify them. And then do, okay, this this job gives me this or this business will bring me this. That will bring me that. Take out actually your expenses. A lot of times people don't think about the expense side of things. Oh, the company will give you a car. But who is fueling it? Oh, you are fueling it. Who is taking care of the maintenance? Oh, who is t- I'm taking care of the maintenance. Okay, fine. If you are going to buy your own car, will you buy that kind of car? No. You'll buy something less expensive. Okay, you see. So when you, do, when you put numbers to these things, it actually gets simpler to assess. And you also think about the probability of success, not just the probability of the glamorous outcome. Things would actually, your assessments will actually be better. And like uh, how you were saying, uh, Ramit broke it down for the lady, Sarah. I, if you consider all these factors, 99% of people in L- MLM don't make money. They lose money. You get me? So we really need to get objective with some of these things. So Adam, what do you think? Yeah, Elikem, it's true. Um, Being objective with these things is very, very important. I think sometimes the MLM, it feeds on people, it feeds on giving people some fantasies. Like you see, look at for her, for example, they've given her a Cadillac. Oh, okay, every month they send you a check and the check is $500. Meanwhile, the monthly uh, uh, payments for the lease is supposed to be $650, meaning that she has a uh, 690 rather uh-huh. so it Which means she's up up up. close to 200 exactly close to 200 though. and you know she has not paid particular thing. her mind is just that they are sending her a check so like if you don't sit down and properly uh, uh, look at these things you would you would just be chasing after the front the whole idea that she's driving a Cadillac or something around them is what they are is that's what they are using as a selling point to push that that dream for you and meanwhile what it's requ- you you are you are required to meet a certain minimum amount of a uh, 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 minimum target every month to be able to remain at that level and you saw what she, when they asked her how often in the last time how, how often have you missed it? And it was like eight eight, eight times. Eight, meaning that eight for times eight times you've missed it. Yes. For eight months, you've not been able to hit the target. So if we are even taking, let's say, a one-year period, that means eight out of 12, you've missed the target. Mm-hmm. Two thirds of the time. You, that is exactly. That's that's two thirds of the time. Meaning that it's not something that is sustainable. It's not something you can do. But you see, they fed her with that one time mm-hmm. when she hit that target, mm-hmm. and it was because she had five hundred people on her team that she was able to meet that target at that time. But since her numbers kept dropping, she's not been able to hit it. But you see, that fantasy of the Cadillac and being at that top, it was still driving. So she was not objectively looking at the situation. If she was really paying attention step by step, looking at everything and say, hey, look, this month, having made the target, this month, she would have realized that, no, she's in a very terrible thing and, and the deal is no good. But unfortunately, this is how this thing is like dopamine effect. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Is working on her like that. Yeah. And you see her husband sort of also really didn't understand some of the things, but uh, it's like, well, he was just playing along. Uh, once he's making her happy, it's okay. Yeah. Bro, the fantasy that has been sold. And you, you, when you pay attention to the, the language, like right when she starts talking, you, you say, oh, the company pays for the car. The company pays for the car. You, you see. But when you dig in, Sometimes people say anything, they just say something pretty simple or they are not paying attention to the details. So when you have more experience, you have more knowledge about these things and you start digging in, then you realize that, nah, 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 you're not painting the proper picture. The company doesn't pay for it. The company pays a portion of it. Six ninety, maybe on your own, you wouldn't take a, a lease for six ninety to, to actually lease a car. You didn't even just, you didn't even finance it, you leased it. Leasing is a more, the most expensive way of owning the car. Secondly, the fact that they are saddling you with that liability because the lease is also is actually also a loan like you have to pay for the time like if it's a three year lease you have to pay you can't miss a payment you see so and it will affect your credit history because it's effectively a loan they will lend you the car and you promise to make all these payments that have been scheduled right so not only are you getting to pay 190 
dollars a month, you are also being put with that uh, that loan liability on your books. But people don't think about these things. So we need to start really quantifying these things and don't let their fantasy be sold to us. It would really help if we have um, people who are more knowledgeable about these things on in our corners and be open to talking to them about it. Be open to not feel ashamed about these things. And yes, yes, yes. When people are talking about these things, they shouldn't be condescending about it. But sometimes, quite a lot of times, I've actually realized that the message is not just about how you deliver the message. Sometimes if somebody doesn't want to hear the message, no matter how you put it, it will come off wrong, right? I'm just, I'm bringing this up because it's, 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 it's a topic about couples and how they are dealing with money. And, you know, if you are in a couple situation, it can get really tricky to talk about money, you know, so it's, um, it has to be handled delicately, but it still has to be handled. And it gets to a point where as the more we mature, the more we need to realize that, look, it's, we should be able to be comfortable with some some level of, should I say, less delicateness, you know, be able to handle the thing bluntly sometimes because there is clear impending danger and it's not t- now time to be, you know, dancing around the issue. Anyway, it's that, that's interesting. Uh, let's see. Before before we run off, let's see if there are any other themes. Let's talk about Frank. Am I either? Frank is... Yes, Frank. I am here. Yeah, Frank. So Frank... <laughs> Frank in fact, in that episode, he spoke about two different vacations because there was one, when he was talking to his friend, he said he was planning to spend a thousand on a vacation and then he ended up spending 1500. Yeah. And when he was talking to Ramit, he was somewhere and the budget for that one was yeah. 3000, but mm-hmm. it went up. So that means between two episodes, he've got, he's gone to two vacations. <laughs> that he's already blowing through. Okay. All right. Well noted. Um, and then on top of that matter, he says, well, he's going to switch jobs. He's going to jobs, uh, yeah. resign from his main job, which earns yeah. like 50K a year. A year, like, yeah. Bruh. So what's Bro. Ramit ask for him? Ramit says, okay, no problem. Just tell me how you plan to, you, the, the, your new lifestyle without this, this 50K coming in. How mm-hmm. do you plan to replace that income? And how is your spending going to be different so effectively draw up a budget for your new lifestyle and if and my my question for you and what you think about this is when someone is taking certain decisions you are making decisions to change your lifestyle whether it's upgrade your lifestyle or downgrade your lifestyle or whatever and it's when it has financial implications what's your perspective about his his the way he says well he's still gonna take the risk and still gonna enjoy his life like he has to go for as many branches as he wants to, you know? Yeah. And yeah. What, what do you, what do you think of that whole situation? I want to give, I want to, I want a certain kind of life, but I'm not willing to sacrifice yeah. some things. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, we see this with some of, I mean, we can relate. We see a lot of people who find themselves in this situation. I mean, in our circles, in different forms, it's just like, it's just a sort of like not willing to pay the price but wanting to live a certain kind of lifestyle, you see, That's and that is... Team. I like, sorry yeah. to talk, but I like that. You need to ponder replay, not willing to pay the price. Yeah, yeah. Then, but they want to be able to live a certain kind of lifestyle. And you see, it is this type of behavior that traps people in a world of debt and unable to come out, okay, because you will consistently be overspending. I think at the beginning when Ramit was looking at his numbers, his numbers, like in terms of how much he makes and when he was break, giving the breakdown, it's not as bad. It's not that bad because he has this side. He does some therapy here. He does this here. Like he's getting some kind, if you put them together, it's a decent amount because I think he's single. He's not married or anything. He doesn't really have any serious dependence or something like that. So there is, you, you would expect that if he was living a quite a responsible life, he will be able to fit within it. But here again, like you're saying, even where he has said, okay, this is how much he's going, he has planned. Okay, he's going on this vacation. Should we say we won't stop you from doing whatever you are, you want to do, but just make sure you've planned and you've budgeted for it and you have the money for it. So he's planned and he goes. And then he spends 50% more. Then he goes on another one again and he's already running out of over budget again. So you see a problem with discipline. There and then you just see that that is his challenge. 
and 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 it's the it's a theme that keeps running in a lot of people who have financial issues that the discipline and the willingness to take or bite the bullet, pay the price, and make sure that you take certain hard and tough decisions just so that you'll be able to put yourself on the right path. Because you are going he's just doing too many things at the same time. You are you are you want to party, you want to go on branches, you want to go on vacations. Yet in the middle of all this, you are trying to stopping your your stable income, like a stable job that brings you a stable income, and you want to pursue a certain kind of um, a, a, a path where it's more like entrepreneurial, where we know the risks are very a, a, a ripe, you know, where you are not sure of how much you're going to be earning. Why wouldn't he rather ground himself better in his day job and maybe also help his um, side gigs to become much, much more stable and more predictable before he makes that switch. But you see, he seems to be the uh, on the spur of the moment type of person. He just gets up and he moves and he gets up and he takes decisions. But you see, with money decisions, if you do that, it will come back to haunt you. And so that's how it came up for me. I, I see him as a very lovely, lively person, you know, bubbly. He wants fun and everything, but he needs a certain amount of discipline to bring him in check and it's good that Ramit had started asking him some of the hard questions and I don't know if he was going to listen but it would be good if he listens and these are the type of things that people need to avert their minds to yeah and I'm listening to you it's <laughs> listen to what you're saying there's just one thought that was running through my head but we need to be teaching these things in basic school we need to be teaching financial discipline in basic school and this is just a call to arms for the work that we do, the work investment friend does. Well, we need to get to that point where we are shifting policy. In in, in the U.S., Dave Ramsey says um, the Ramsey Solutions has, like, certain states in the U.S. have uh, financial literacy um, courses and students need to take it before they can graduate from high school. And they have Ramsey Solutions as that particular, as a program like that. All right, so it's, it's, it's really sad. We may think that, oh, this particular thing is, is an unforeseen, an unforeseen, um, what's it called? An unforeseen, uh, no, no, it's, we think when we watch these series, these are just isolated cases, but they are not. They are quite prevalent. When you talk to people about money, a lot of people make it look like, oh, everything is okay, everything is all right. Until things, you start peeling things, you know, and you peel the onion and you realize, oh, this happened, that happened, or some events happened. And you go like, whoa, it's, it's a whole kind of worms, right? This other, pe- uh, the I've forgotten the name, the drag queen, right? His when his fiancee found out that he has credit card debts, like, yes, I thought you had paid all those off. Like, people communicate as if everything is okay, and I and I get it because there have to be some some coping mechanisms, but you know. To show that this is not, an, these are not isolated cases, uh, I, I wanted to find the data. Dave Ramsey talks about this. A lot of people talk about it on their shows. And I wanted to find a real source. There's a general statistic that goes like, in the US, about 40% of people do not have enough cash to cover an expense that will cost, an emergency that will cost them $500. Also in the U.S., 60% of people, of adults, don't have enough money to cover an emergency that will cost $2,000. That means they'll have to use credit cards or they'll have to go into debt to cover these expenses. Now, if we want to bring it to a Ghanaian context, I say that, look, if you want to convert, don't convert at the exchange rate. Just imagine it's 500 cities, and the 2,000 cities that we are talking about. Just see the earning as the earnings as one is to one and then take the expenses as one is to one. It's very dire. Sixty percent of people don't have cash to cover to an emergency of two thousand. That means we are just one event away from financial ruin. Maybe they will have it in their four one K. Maybe hopefully a lot more people may have it there. But that comes with so many penalties. You know, so that's why we emphasize emergency funds. I think we need to start normalizing some of these things. And I'm looking on the Fed website. 
the data on the Fed website, actually, the Federal Reserve in the US actually backs up this thing that I'm saying, these general statistics, because they got it from the Fed surveys. It's it's really sad. It's really sad. I I really wish people would take personal finance seriously. I and I, I know when I talk to doctors too, I know they also say they wish people would take health more seriously. There are many basic things that we should take more seriously in our general lives, like wealth and well-being, exercising, moving, less attention to social media. Like there are many things that we have to do as adults. But maybe what we can just try to do is in pick pick a few things in each of these topics and just commit to doing a few things that will make everything right you know so it's sad it's sad and maybe i'm also coming from a place where i've had some recent experiences where when people think you're in the fin- personal finance space and they try to make you look like well you think you're better than other people kind of thing whereas if I've, I've observed it's having conversations about some of these things for some people it puts a mirror next to them and they they start assessing themselves like okay I'm not cutting it but then the messenger gets shot right so it's really sad it's really sad that people are living their lives this way but anyway anyway we keep it moving we keep educating we keep spreading the word and we keep hoping that more people would hear and see themselves the world of drama try to get live a life within their means and then grow like everybody should enjoy like back in the day when I wasn't making much, I knew that every Friday night I had to jam. So the kind of places that I was going are places that I could go with less money. You understand? Then as the income grows, you go to places that you can still jam. Because if, if your, your entertainment budget is 10%, 10% of 2,000 CDs is different from 10% of 5,000 CDs. You understand? You just doubled, you more than doubled your income. So you more than doubled your entertainment budget, you see. So cut your coat according to your size, basically. Right. And I a lot of this pressure, a lot of this pressure falls on men. I'm not saying life is easy as a woman, no. But for the people on the dating scene, a lot of these bills, you are the one going to cover it. So okay. Anyway, Charlie, let me end my rant at that juncture. <laughs> are there any other themes that you wanted to pick up on from this episode? Oh wait, I have oh. one for you. I have one for you. Actually, I have yeah. one for you. It's kind of tangential to this. When um the, the the person we just spoke about, when he was he was talking ab- with his friend and they were talking about stability versus comfort. Mm-hmm. Some people want to live comfortably. They want to live yeah. luxuriously. Like luxury and comfort are different. I'm not saying they are the same, right? Mm-hmm. But for some people, their comfort is luxury. But anyway, let's say comfort and then versus stability. The choice between these things. Some people do certain things that are comfortable. Like okay, I don't want to have to cook and deal with all the drama of going grocery shopping and all that, so I just be eating out all the time. It's mm. more convenient. That's yeah. some level of comfort. It's not like they're buying okay. food from, from from the most expensive restaurants, no. Exactly. But it's still mm. more expensive than cooking on your own or meal prepping or something, you know? Yeah. Versus somebody who will say, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll pay, like you said, I'll pay the price and then get some stability. What, what do you think mm. about stability versus comfort? And yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think. As for comfort, every once in a while, I think we should be that flexible to allow ourselves to sometimes choose comfort. But I think, as a general rule, we should we should tend to lean towards more of stability because that then get, like it's just like what the Ramsey says: like live like no one else, so that you can live like no one else. You know, if you the thing is that the price, yeah, it will be paid. Yeah. Hey, then please break, break, break what you just said. Break it down for us. I say, live like no one else, mm-hmm. so that you can live like no one else. That mm-hmm. means like, that after now, if everybody else is living like a comfortable life, luxury, or living a luxurious life and living the life and everything, you should stick to your budgeting, cutting your coat according to your size, as you were saying. Uh, making sure that you are you are living within your means and everything, so that you can now live like no one else. When in future, everybody else is now sort of like struggling because maybe they didn't prepare for their retirements, they have they didn't save, they didn't invest. You can now be living the luxurious life. You can now be living in comfort. You can now afford the things you could not afford before because you have prepared and you have saved and you have you have worked towards it. Uh huh. 
So it is a matter of the sequence. Like I say, I for mm-hmm. like I was even saying, yeah, it's a matter of the sequence. It, the price it will be paid. Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. the price yeah, it will be paid. Mm. It's either you pay, but it is cheaper when you pay it earlier yes. than when you pay it later because compound interest, we know. So mm-hmm. in the same way, if you don't pay the price now, it will be compounded. In future, mm. you will have to pay for it uh-huh, mm. because I would rather prefer to be an old man in my 60s traveling the world and enjoying myself and, and feeling fine in my retirement and then enjoying the, the nice things of life. And to do it now, and then as an old man, be going around and be begging, and touch would be expecting that unless uh, be waiting for my my or if my parents, uh, my children don't send me some stipend for the month, then it means mm. actually uh, 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 don't uh, the month unless God comes. <laughs> unless God comes, I, that's that's one. Yeah, the touch yeah. food that should not be my portion. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie. You know, so that is where we say live like no one else, so that you can live like no one else, because eventually the price. Will be paid. So why don't you pay? Why don't you pay it now? People say that. Oh well, you only live once. Yeah, it's true. You only live once. But what if you live a hundred years? That's one very long one. That one is very, very long. long one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. What's the, you, you know. You don't even have to think about a hundred years, bro. Yeah. You don't have to think about like think about sixty-five. Think about seventy-five. Mm. That is. Mm-hmm. 10 years, 10, 15 years you've not been working. Where's the money going to come from? To, to, Where is it going to, to come from? Where is it going to come from? And that life has to be funded. And you know, it's funny how I you know in these few uh, uh, weeks and uh, uh, well, this year in particular, I've, I've encountered a number of retired people. Some people, I mean, people who not like they even live by heart. So they have their, they are in their own houses and everything. And I see how it's not easy because now you have you are saddled with a building and you have to maintain this building and you have to take care of it and touch wood if you are faced with this type of comorbidities, maybe hypertension or diabetes, then trouble. The costs of running, I mean, even taking care of yourself, it's not an easy thing. So it's, it's, it's something that is very important that we need to take take uh, uh, into con- uh Think about it and ensure that we 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 take care of ourselves very well and prepare for these times. I, I mean, let's buy the bullet now. Eventually, it will pay off the same way. And you see, the funny thing, the compound interest it works both ways. If you borrow, it 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 bites you. If you invest, you make a lot of uh, money out of it. The same way I was saying, the decisions. If you buy, it, if you take pay the cost now. You, it's better and it's cheaper. But if you wait, it will be compounded and then it will now hit back at you in a very, very, very uh, hard-hitting way. Yeah. Hmm. The price to be paid and the sequence, the timing of it, bro, that timing of it is so important. But these days, it's... I know the conversation has gone a bit tangential, but it's, we are talking about a show about people's what people are going through in real life. And and I find myself in an environment where there's a lot of YOLO. There's a lot of life is stressful, so I just want to enjoy. I want to enjoy. I want to enjoy. People just want to travel. They want to buy luxury stuff. They want to do so many things. It's not sustainable. And especially for someone who is trying to pair up with another person, these things have become so normal. Seeing certain things that I would consider financially responsible, which people know are financially responsible, comes of us. Yeah, you are rather wrong, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, cool. But then it's not like we don't want to enjoy life. It's not like we, we sit here on money convos, we don't like to enjoy life. Like if anybody who has ever seen any car that I paid, my, I paid for, Knows that I like my cars. I like my cars nice. I don't like just the early, the, the normal version. Oh, you understand? I like I like good things. But the, the question is when, you know, people borrow to do that. People borrow, go on trips on their credit cards. And yet they'll be saying, oh, I, I got my own thing. I got my own everything, right? But men and women go on Instagram, everything looking all good. But we are not, we see what they post, but we don't see their wallets. We don't see what goes on on the back end. But then I was, I was thinking about it myself. One of the goals that I have for some years, like in the future, I've not, I've not written it hard and fast, is imagine if we can save the money. We're talking about compounding interest working in our favor. Save enough money, you build a net, 
uh, an investment enjoyment fund. You understand? Uh, uh, an enjoyment fund, all right? Where you've built up, let's say, $1 million. Maybe that's even a stretch. Let's say $100,000 that you've put in that account. And every year it's earning 10% on that. That's $10,000 a year. If every quarter you want, want to go on a vacation, that will cost around 2500 because there are a lot of these re, uh, all-inclusive resorts that you can go for, maybe 150 to 200 to even $300 a, a night, all right? You just built a nest egg of a hand. You just built an enjoyment fund of a hundred thousand. That way, when you are spending, when you are enjoying, when you are doing all those things that you want to do in your youth, it's coming out of the returns on something. You are not depleting an asset compared to when you are taking it out of your income. Like our incomes are our seeds. So why not sow that seed, invest it, so that it to become a, a tree? That way, every every couple of months. You go and pluck the fruits from that tree to enjoy. But nah, a lot of people want to spend, want to eat the seeds and they want to eat the seeds now. That way, when you've built that fund, your income will be left. Your main salary, you won't be touching it for enjoyment. You understand? But anyway, anyway, what do I know? <laughs> oh, well, Charlie, Adam. This this one, I, uh, I see Dennis has joined. I hope Dennis is listening to this. Dennis, don't let anyone pressure you. Eh? <laughs> Think about the future. Think a lot about the future. <laughs> I, I see a lot of young men. You know, we've spoken about this a couple of times. My young cousin is like, bro, like I can't afford to even like a girl. Can't afford to be thinking yeah. about a relationship right now. That's not serious. Hey, you need even have some girl that you were pressing, pressing back in university, self. No. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, that's just on a lighter note. Is there any other theme you want to pick us to discuss before we we wrap this up? Oh wait, before you say that, I, I I just have one. Speaking of the price to pay, I have a quote that I looked up. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So let's think of the potential risks and let's take those ounces of prevention early on so that we could save ourselves a world of cure that would be necessary, hard cures that would be necessary later. But yeah, then any, any, now back to you, any any final thoughts on this episode that we just listened to? Yeah, so I think um, concluding thoughts um, I would say like as has been running through from the beginning up to now, that uh, we we just need to be intentional about our, uh, 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 our finances and uh, and then have that fine balance. Yes, of course, we, we need to enjoy life, but of course if you say enjoy, it's so relative. You see, like when we're even talking about the wedding budget, it's it's a whole spectrum, starting from as low as it can be to as high as it can be. So just find wherever it is you are, whatever you are trying to do, make sure that you are working according to plan. Ensure that you are not stretching yourself beyond what you are capable of. If you cannot afford it, don't kill yourself to do it because everybody else is trying to do the same thing. And by affording... For us, I think our definition is that you can pay cash for it. You can cough out the money and pay for it. That means you can afford. Don't look at the fact that maybe this thing they say, okay, you can pay for it in bits and pieces. And so it means that you can afford. Yes, you could afford a payment, but you cannot afford the whole thing in, in entirety. So it's very important that we watch these things and not overspend like our friend who goes on a holiday and spends more than 50% uh, in excess. So it's important that um, we watch these aspects and we don't find ourselves digging a hole because like you said, an ounce of uh, prevention is worth more than a pound of what? Of cure. Of cure, exactly. Which just simple like we almost always say prevention is better than cure. You know, if you I can who, prevent, I don't know who says that, but we will say provision is better than kiosk. But provision is better than kiosk. Yeah, I mean that was a good one there. So you know, it's always better to 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 avoid because I listen. Like I mean, we can't talk about, on this show without talking about the Ramsey's shows. Too, you know, when you listen to people who come and do their debt debt free scream you realize that it's a series of uh, wrong decisions, bad decisions, 
series of emotional decisions and what have you that lead them into some uh, 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 some terrible situation and sometimes correcting these things is not that easy it means you are really going to do fundamental fundamental shifts to your life and squeezing yourself is painful so if you can avoid entering situations where you would find yourself in a death trap it's far better to prevent it than to land yourself with certain things and it becomes like a shackle around you and you don't know how to free yourself so Let's let's just watch it. Be intentional. Budget. Follow our budgets. Look at what we have to do. Review what we have to do. Live within our means. Yes, I know. Uh, the cost of living has really made a lot of things that ordinarily uh, we would have said, "Oh, these are budget-friendly things that we all could enjoy." But now it has made a lot of them go beyond our reach. But whatever it is, let's just still look within our budget, see how, what we can shift, what we can cut out, what we can change, back and forth, back and forth. And I believe that eventually we can all be able to live that dream that we all have, where we all want to become financially free and financially independent. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you for the words, so sweet. Thank you for those concluding remarks, Adam. So yeah, if if anyone as as we think about this journey, let's let's keep following Money Convos here on on Twitter or X. Let's follow Money Convos on Facebook, um, Instagram. We want to do a repeat of this conversation. Maybe you liked it, you want to share it with somebody else on our YouTube. Look for Money Convos wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere. Just search for Money Convos. You'll find it there then if you want to take this a step further, you know, it's instead of just speaking generally, you want to say, okay, my wedding is coming up. I want to know what I can afford. You need someone to think through these numbers. You have some job offers you are considering. You want someone to help you. Or you, you have certain financial goals you want to hit. You need someone technically competent to help you. We have a friend for you, investment friend. Get on Instagram and look up at investment underscore friend. Get there, just you have a whole community of people to help you. There are challenges to make sure that everything is going together. Um, and one-on-one, -on -one, your financial situation is different from other people's financial situation. Even your sister, your brother, even your partner is very different. So have these conversations with, the, with some professionals who know your situation and get away from the generic and focus more on you. So yeah, you know, Adam, just a, a, a thought just hit me when you were talking. And as I was talking about getting on the investment friend, those communities and all that, this conversation really has, has me thinking there because a lot of decisions ahead of me because you know, I'm, I'm in a transitory phase. Transition from, you know, I went from a normal adult living life, working, then I went to school and school will make you feel like a child again when you are not making the kind of income you were making before. And then now I'm starting life uh, after a master's program um, with a huge debt, but gra grass are due. Thanks to God, at least with a comfortable enough income to build that. And then just thinking about decisions. And you alluded to a topic that we'll be having on next week's conversation. I think I'm looking at Dennis and I think that's what we are going to talk about next week. Emotional dis uh, purchases. Yeah, and this conversation is especially for me because I have a very emotional purchase have ahead of me. Come September, I have to make a decision. So uh, today I can see that Adam is trying to convince me. He didn't know it, but the things, the points he was making, Talia, or maybe I shouldn't do it. But I'm looking forward to that conversation next week when we talk about emotional decision making or emotional purchases. And hopefully that will prevent me from going to spend too much money on a Mercedes AMG and maybe just buy a Honda Accord. <laughs> oh man, this is interesting. I'm looking forward to that conversation. So if you're also looking forward to that conversation, catch you. Um, next next week and come with your money decisions. Maybe you've already made that decision or a decision you made in the past. Then let's let's have a, let's have a chat about these things. See how emotions affect our spending. All right then. Thank you all for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your week. Catch you same time next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our thoughts. I hope you learned a thing or two and start practicing. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse and Facebook. 
and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast. Do tell a friend about Money Convos so we all become wealthy together. Talk to you soon. Bye.